are at the Salt Spring Saturday Market. I have been coming here since I was two with my dad who has a booth here and still continues to this day to bring his arts and crafts as do many other amazing islanders. We're going to wander through and just share a few of the artists that we've come across today and their stories and their work, so enjoy. So my name is Theodore Lowry. I'm living on the island here with my wife, whose art is also here. Her name is Jessie White. So this is some of the artwork I have here. There's graphic novels and comics and prints. And I'll speak something about this piece of work here, which I'm calling Salish Sea. You can see in this piece that there is a man, and he's playing flute. And there's a woman, and she's playing the drum. The man is playing the flute for creatures in the land ecosystem, in the terrestrial ecosystem here. So he's doing his part, doing ceremony and giving thanks. Some indigenous teachings, they'll talk about how one of the things as humans we have to give back is our voice, is our praise, is our appreciation of this world. And so he's doing that in the form of his flute. And he's doing his, his little part to keep things going. And she is playing a drum for these creatures of the ocean. She's expressing her appreciation. And you can see that her feet are rooted in the land, although she's of the ocean, and his feet are submerged in the water, although he's of the land. And in the middle there's a whale, and the whale is crested with an eagle. So this piece is really about this interrelationship between the sea and the land. You know, we hear that a salmon, they swim upstream and they bring so much to the forests. They get eaten by bears and pooped out and they bring a lot of marine nutrients into the forest. And the water that seeps through the forest streams, it comes out to the sea and it nourishes the kelp forest where the fish can grow. And of course, the higher predators, they'll prey on the fish and keep that going. So we're living now in the Salish Sea ecosystem. And although it's called the Salish Sea Ecosystem, it's an ecosystem that's sea and land together. So this piece is really about that, about, you know, becoming more aware of the other inhabitants of this system with us uh, through science and also through ceremony. So, yeah, this is inspired by the land and by the people here, especially First Nations people here, and by the indigenous thinking and from all over the world. Thank you.
So I feel like for me, my journey with art has been about understanding that every person has a gift to give and a message that wants to be spoken through them. All throughout our lives, we're kind of trained to approach the arts as in like, oh, if you don't have skill, then you can't express that. Like you have to receive all this training and become a master of it. What really I've realized is that your message belongs to you and reclaiming the right, you can become an artist. Everyone is really, and everyone has that capacity to tap into what wants to be spoken through them. I've never had training as an art. I didn't go to school for it, and I didn't start drawing regularly till later on in life. So most of my journey has been about having the courage to come forward with it, even when it's you know more simplistic in skill. But I think that people resonate with that simplicity, and they also feel like oh, I can do that too. It's not something that just belongs to other people. I really want to give that message that art belongs to everybody and it's very participatory and the intuition element is pretty critical. I just try to rely on asking before I begin the process and that's such a mystery what will come out. I think that's my favorite part about it, the surrender into the mystery and it's better than what I could come up with on my own.